There are seasons in our life where certain things are happening in a certain way and they're flowing and they're moving and there's momentum. But when that momentum stops and that movement stops, it's the time for us to lean in and say, God, what's the next step? I said, it's not the time to complain. It's not the time to murmur. It's not the time to give up. It's not the time to lay by a brook that can't give you sustenance anymore. But it's time to say, God, what is the next step? What is it that you're asking of me? What is it that you're calling me to do? Because the brook is dried up for a reason, and that reason is to move me. If you got your Bible, would you go ahead? I'm not going to start here, but you can turn here. Turn to 1 Kings 17. But I'm going to start at Psalm 37. Psalm 37, 23 says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Somebody say, my steps are being ordered by God. See, I believe this. God has a plan. He has a purpose. And he has a destiny for our lives in Jesus Christ. That our steps are ordered. Now, we have a choice. How many of you understand we have a choice? We have a choice whether or not we're going to follow God's path. But the Bible says the path is found in a certain place. It's found in his word. Everybody say his word. Because we see in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So a good man's steps are ordered to the Lord. He's ordering my steps, and those steps are found in his word. His word is lighting the way before us. So God has a way for us. There's, the Bible says this. There's a way that seems right to a man. Is everybody here? Okay. There's a way. There is a way. Somebody say a way. A way. Just because it's a way doesn't mean it's the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But there's a way. There's a way that seems right to, the man, to a man, but the end thereof to, to our carnal nature, our carnal minds, there's a way, but the end of that way is destruction. So we have a choice whether we're going to follow after our own way or the way of this world or we're going to follow after the way of Christ, which is going to lead us into all that he's purposed for our lives in him. His word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So I'm not walking through this life haphazardly just thinking that things are going to happen. Come on, church. I'm not just thinking that I'm going to happen upon it. I'm moving with intention. I'm moving with the word of God. God's word is lighting the way before each and every one of us, and he's showing us this is the way, walk in it. The Bible says this, trust in the Lord. The who? The Lord. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Watch this. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he will, watch this, direct your paths. In all your ways, acknowledge him. What does that mean? That means that I'm seeking his perfect will for my life in every area of my life. And I'm saying, God, what is your word? What is it that you're saying about this? What is it that you're wanting to lead me into? How many of you know that he's the good shepherd? Come on, church. He said, I am the good shepherd. And guess what? His sheep know his voice, and they follow him. They won't follow another. So what are we listening for? We're listening for the voice of the one that's leading us because the Bible says they that are led. That's the book of John. They that are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Well, it says this in Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The one in John that I was thinking of is, to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. But those who are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. So we follow his voice. And when we follow his voice, we're led in his path. His path is leading us step by step. He gives us every step. His instructions. Now, everybody hear this. You've heard me say it before, but you need to hear it again and again and again. The instructions that you follow will determine the future that you possess. So who's instructing you? Is it your favorite podcast? Or is it the living word of God? There's a lot of people that are following after a voice, but we need to be following after the voice, the one whose voice created the heavens and the earth, the, the voice of the one who is ordering our steps, the voice of the one who is saying, this is my perfect 
path for your life. Follow the voice of the Lord. And so now I want to go, if you would go with me, I want to take you to 1 Kings 17. Everybody hear this. Every step with God, and say this, every step with God takes me higher. Every step with God takes me higher. Every step we take with God, we learn. Every step we take with God, we grow. And that's why it's a step-by-step journey, because I can't get there until I take this step. But when I take this step, there's something that God is doing in this now moment in my life that he's going to begin to reveal to me the next steps. Listen, you can't get to the next steps until you take the first step. We got to take the steps that God is asking us to take. First Kings 17. Now, Elijah, the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. So he's prophesying. There's not going to be any rain until I say rain is coming. It's not going to rain. There's not even going to be dew on the ground until the Lord gives me permission to say again it's going to rain. And the word of the Lord came to him, to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to him and said, Depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith. Now what does this sound like to you? It sounds like direction. It sounds like instruction. You're going to head in this direction. You're going to go to this place. How many of you know there's power when you position yourself in the place that God has called you to? (laughs) There's divine provision when you're standing in the word of God and walking in the word of God. Everything begins to flow to that place. Ah. See, we don't want to be out of position in life. We want to be exactly where the Lord wants us to be. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be somewhere the Lord hasn't called me to be. I don't want to find myself doing something the Lord hasn't called me to do because the power and the provision is in the place that God has called me to. Everybody hear this statement, planted things grow. If you want to grow, you got to get planted in the soil and the place that God has called you to plant because that's where the nourishment is coming. That's where the provision is coming. That's where the breakthrough is coming. That's where you're going to even get your next steps. i got to be in the place that God has called me to be in, which means I've got to follow his directions. He says, go east, depart from here, leave, turn eastward, and hide yourself By the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink of the brook. So what is God telling him? He's he's gonna tell him, listen, I'm gonna take care of you. Uh, (laughs) I'm gonna take care of you. Today somebody needs to hear that word. God will not call you to something that he will not give you what you need to accomplish it. If God has called you to do something, he's gonna bring everything that is needed to that. You have his grace. I'm going to say something that I like to say. I'm going to say it again. There's grace for every space of your life. And when you're taking steps with God, he's always going to bring to that time and that moment everything that is needed for his word to come to pass. He said, I'm taking you to this place, but I'm not going to leave you there without what you need. Everybody hear this. In Christ Jesus, all of our needs are met. God is not going to ask you to do something that he's not going to bring everything to that thing to to bring to pass everything that he's spoken or said about it in other words God's never going to leave you out there on on your own if he told you to go somewhere he's going to be there with you is everybody hearing this so he said you're going to go to the brook Cherith and there you're going to drink you're going to drink oh I tell you every place that God calls us to in this spiritual journey is a place where we can continue to drink we're being We are being fed by him. We are being nourished by him. And he said, watch this. He said, you're going to drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens. I have commanded the ravens. What are they going to do? He said, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did, watch this, he went and did what? He went and did what? 
according to the word of the Lord. He did what God told him to do. He went to the place that God told him he would be fed. He went to the place where God told him that his needs would be provided. And he goes to that place and he's drinking now from the brook and he's being fed by ravens. These ravens that are scavenger birds, that, that their nature is to take. Somehow when God gets a hold of your nature, instead of being a taker, now you begin to give. I don't know if you've ever been poolside and had food by the pool and all of a sudden the birds start flocking around. Anybody ever seen that? What are they waiting for? They're waiting for the moment that you're not looking so that they can swoop down and take your food. Take your french fries. Take, take your bread. Take whatever is there because the nature of those scavenger birds is to take. But somehow God speaks to the birds and the nature that was to take now begins to give. I'm going to tell you, when you get in the flow of God, your nature might have been one thing, but when you get in the flow of God and his word, he begins to change things. He begins to turn things around. And that which you could not do by yourself because it was a part of your old nature, now you have a new nature in Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I have a new nature. So now these birds that are takers are now giving him the food. They're getting it from somewhere. <laughs> and then they're bringing it to Elijah, and they're feeding Elijah. And said, he went and lived by the brook, Cherith, that is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. They're feeding him twice a day. That's awesome. And he drank from the brook. And after a while, after a while, the brook dried up. The brook dried up. Everybody say the brook dried up. Because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. I've commanded a widow there to feed you. So listen, God directs his steps and he brings him to the brook where he, he gets all the provision that he needs for that season. But when that season was through, God begins to give him next steps. Now watch this, because a lot of times when the brook dries up in our life, we begin to complain. A lot of times we say, God, did you leave me here? You let me, you told me there would be water. Now there's no water. We begin to complain. We begin to, to look at God and say, God, what, what is going on here? What's the problem? But have you ever thought that maybe there's a reason that the brook dried up? Everybody hear this. A lot of times we don't realize that if the brook didn't dry up, we would never be willing to go somewhere new. We get so comfortable in doing things the same way that a lot of times God has to allow certain things in our life to dry up so that we'll be willing to take a step further with God than we've ever gone before. And you know it in your life. You know that there's, there are seasons in our life where certain things are happening in a certain way and they're flowing and they're moving and there's momentum. But when that momentum stops and that movement stops, it's the time for us to lean in and say, God, what's the next step? Ah, Y'all aren't hearing me preach today. I said it's not the time to complain. It's not the time to murmur. It's not the time to give up. It's not the time to lay by a brook that can't give you sustenance anymore. But it's time to say, God, what is the next step? What is it that you're asking of me? What is it that you're calling me to do? Because the brook is dried up for a reason, and that reason is to move me. To move me out of where I am and into the next step that God is calling us to take. Now watch this, because here by the brook, he is, the Lord says, depart from here, go eastward, go to the brook called Cherith, hide there. So this is a season of, of, of a time of being alone with God. God is doing something in his life in this moment. As a matter of fact, Cherith, the book Cherith, Cherith means cutting, the place of cutting. So we don't know what's happening in Elijah's life, but God has brought him to this place and he's, he's drinking from the brook and he's getting fed from the ravens, but God has brought him into a season of hiding, I believe, because God is wanting to do an internal work in Elijah to get him ready for the next thing he's about to bring him into. 
And while he's in that time and in that season with God, everything is flowing. But when it's time to take the next step, the brook stopped. The brook stopping is not negative. The brook stopping means it's time to move. It's time to move forward. It's it's time to take another step with God. How many of you believe that there are times in your life where God brings you to a place where he's wanting to cut some things away from you? Everybody hear this. Pruning always comes before new life and new growth and greater growth. Pruning always comes. It comes, it, it comes to churches. It comes in, in your, your life and your walk with God. You'll have seasons where you're like, you feel it flourishing and you feel yourself thriving. And you, you start saying, man, it couldn't get better than this. And all of a sudden you go through a time where it seems like there's a, a cutting away. There's a pruning. Because before new things can happen, old things have to pass away. Uh, I I was praying one time and I was walking around in my basement and I was praying and as I was praying this has happened to me a few times where I have these visions and I see things Uh, one time I saw a plant pot and the soil and the Lord spoke to me and said that soil is the anointing and as I saw that I saw a tree come out of the soil and begin to produce branches and fruit on the branches and the Lord said that everyone who is planted in this soil will produce and then he began to tell me how this church that he had called is a place where if people plant they'll begin to thrive and produce but this time I'm praying and I see a vision and I see a snake a lot of times when people see things like that they immediately go this is an evil thing what's going on but I see the snake And I'm watching this snake, it's rubbing itself around through rocks. And as it's rubbing itself around from rocks, its skin's coming off. And I said, God, what is this that I'm seeing? Is this some kind of evil thing? I mean, what is it that you're trying to show me? He said, no, that's you. What are you trying to say, God? He said, no, that's you. He said, before a snake can grow it has to shed the skin it's in and the Lord began to reveal to me that at that moment I was in a time where old things were being removed from me so that God could take me into a greater place of growth I'm telling you we go through seasons like that in life I don't care what people say I've heard people say God doesn't work that way he doesn't work seasonal but I'm telling you as long as the earth remains, if seed time and harvest is it, how many of you know people use seed time and harvest as a spiritual principle? I believe that. But the same scripture says, as long as the earth, earth remains, summer and winter, cold and heat, there are seasons that we walk through in this life, and every season carries a purpose. There's a time of a stripping away, and those stripping aways come, though, to bring us into new garments. Y'all don't want to hear me preach today. But understand this, you might be in that kind of season where you're, you're, you're in, a, in a hidden away moment where you're by the brook Cherith and there's, there's a cutting away that's going on in your life but that cutting is for the purpose of God producing even more and bringing you into a greater place of productivity and a place where he can use you at a greater level because it's those moments that we really develop that relationship that we need with the Lord where we're depending on him and depending on that water and depending on the ravens in other words Elijah was in a position during that time where he he couldn't make it happen for himself but he's in a place where he's trusting in the Lord now when the brook dries up God moves it God says now it's time to come out of your hiding place and I want to take you to Zarephath where there's a widow there now in this season of hiding God's taking care of Elijah But now God's going to bring Elijah to a place where it's not just going to be taking care of Elijah, but the widow and Elijah are going to begin to take care of each other. How many of you know God's called us into a place where we're not isolated, but in a place where we can take care of each other?